This is a tutorial video on using the graphical user interface for the ADF program. We start off by making a folder that will contain all the files that we create in this tutorial and then we open up the ADF input program. Start by drawing a molecule, just drawing the backbone of ethanol here and use the add hydrogen utility to saturate it with hydrogen. And the different buttons of the mouse can be used to zoom in and zoom out of the molecule and rotate it around. If we open up the preferences manual, there are a few other things that we can change. Here I'm changing the color of the carbon atoms and applying that. And if you don't like it, you can always change it back to default. It's just one of the many things that we can change for the appearance of the molecule. Once we're happy with how it looks, we can save a picture of it if we wish. Now I'm going to show you how to manipulate the atoms in the molecule. Here I've selected multiple atoms and another way to do it is to just shift click on the atoms that you want and I can actually control click on one of them to rotate this group I just selected. Made it eclipsed and if I hit the optimize button molecular mechanics moves it back to staggered. If I select two atoms you can vary the bond length. If I select three atoms you can vary the bond angle and naturally selecting four atoms which I'm doing right here, allows us to vary the dihedral angle. And if we open up the coordinates menu on the right hand side, we can actually vary the Cartesian or internal coordinates by manually changing the numbers, or we can simply watch how they change as we use the up and down arrows in the left window. We're going to alter this molecule a bit. We're going to oxidize the ethanol to acetic acid. Do that by removing a hydrogen, changing another hydrogen to oxygen, and changing that carbon-oxygen bond to a double bond. Again, we can use simple molecular mechanics to get a rough structure of it, move it around to our liking. And if we don't like our ethanol oxidized, we can actually reduce it back to its original form. You can simply use the undo button or you can do it manually as I'm showing you here by deleting the oxygen we added and adding the hydrogens back and then resetting it with molecular mechanics. Now to actually set up a DFT calculation we use the right panel here. I'm going to set up a DFT geometry optimization with a very small single zeta basis set and a very rough integration accuracy. And we're going to save this job, which we have to do before we run it. And it's telling us our parameters aren't exactly optimal, but we haven't chosen them to be the best. We've chosen them to simply finish very quickly. This is only a demonstration. And if we open up our ADF jobs, we can see the files that ADF input has created. And we can go ahead and run the job that we just made. Now this is the ADF log file. It's showing us the geometry optimization results in real time as the calculation is going. And it shows us how the geometry changes through each cycle and when it actually converges to the result. When it finishes, it asks us if we want to import the new structure, and of course we say yes. And here's a little bit of the log file telling us the geometry has converged and the calculation has terminated normally. You can go ahead and close that up now. And here are a bunch of other files that the calculation has generated. We're going to open up ADF Movie now. 
and this shows us an animation of that DFT geometry optimization, optimization that we just did. And we can see how the energy changes as the geometry changes in the graph. We can also see how other aspects of the molecule changes. Here we're looking at the C1, C2 bond distance as the energy goes down. Many other things you can look at as well. Now we're going to move up to ADF levels. And this shows us a diagram of what you might see in a Gen Chem textbook, an MO diagram. It shows the bonding occurring in the molecule. Here we're looking at the highest occupied molecular orbital. And we can label that and actually look at a graphical representation of the lobes of the orbital. And we can look at any of the ones we wish, the bonding, the non-bonding, anti-bonding. And we can zoom in, zoom out, rotate them just as we can with the molecule. Now I've opened up the ADF view module and we can do some fancier graphics here. First I'm going to start out with the SCF density plotted on an ISO surface along with the potential. And we can also plot those things on a cut plane. Turn the first one off and select SCF density and we can position that plane wherever we want in the molecule. We can also rotate it, move it up and down. And if we wish on top of this, we can draw some of the molecular orbitals that we've already seen. We'll just pick one here. And there it is, right on top of the cut plane, or we can turn that off, turn it on as we wish. And we can also save a picture of this if we want to, to use it in presentations or for whatever purpose we like. By default, it'll save in PNG format, while many other formats are available. Give it a different name from our molecule so we don't overwrite that. And finally, let's take a look at the ADF output this is actually the verbose text output of the calculation. And you can jump to different parts of this output by using the menu headers above, or you can simply scroll through it to see the parts that you want. All the results of the calculation are there with references at the end for your convenience. That concludes this tutorial. Thank you all for watching.